Folks, so much to take away from this. And of course, remember, you can always use that chat function to get involved with the conversation, ask any questions. I know we have SecureWorks experts on hand to chat with you. Many thanks again to Keith for his thought leadership in that arena. So wonderful to have him on our programme. Folks, at this juncture, we have a series of fascinating lightning talks, short, snappy conversations, but steeped in real life case studies and tangible takeaways. Our first lightning talker is senior security researcher, John Mancuso, who will be giving us a tour of some of the major information stealers and why organizations ought to pay attention. John, I know you're joining me virtually as well. Fabulous to have you with us. Uh, how are you? I'm doing excellent. How are you, Jules? I'm doing excellent too. I like that everyone's calling me Jules. That's nice. Um, so, John, you've got your PowerPoint presentation just below you there. I'm going to hand you the floor and get into this. Okay, thanks so much, Jules. Thanks for everyone attending today. My name is John Mancuso. I work primarily on malware analysis and reverse engineering. So today we're going to talk about information stealers, starting by reviewing some of the major and minor families in the space, how they generally work, what info stealers look like on the underground, and why businesses should really care about this class of malware. So the current state is that there are a lot of info, info stealers out there, and which stealers are active changes every day. Currently, some of the more well-known and long-lived are Vidar, Redline, and both versions of Raccoon. One of the formerly major stealers is called RK or RK, which led to multiple variants that evolved and spun off into their own new families. Some RK variants include OSCE, Vidar, and Mars. There are even some more uh, small or one-off stealer families and, and more emerging every day. Some of these are open source and posted to code sharing platforms like GitHub, for example, Luca Stealer. It's important to note that some malware families that have the capability of stealing data also provide remote access functionality. So the line between rats and stealers is sometimes unclear. Traditionally, stealers heavily focus on stored browser information, such as cookies and stored form data, but many now also target cryptocurrency data, either stored in browser extensions or offline via file system regex searching. Stealers also target credentials from specific applications, for example, Steam and remote access software like VPN clients, or even password database files through similar regex file system searches. While stealers don't always look for specific file types or application data to exfiltrate, this is largely dependent on how the operator configured the stealer at build time or via C2 commands. Finally, some stealers do extend their functionality and provide the capability of downloading additional malware or executing scripts on the compromised host, effectively turning the stealer more into a downloader or backdoor. There are two general groups of stealers in terms of their configurations. One group contains a static or embedded config, and you can think of these like a smash and grab. The malware immediately tries to gather all of the information in its config and sends it to the operator as quickly as possible. These typically have no persistence mechanism. The other group is more dynamic, where the stealer must connect to the C2 server to retrieve its config, or has a baseline set of data to steal, then waits to see if the operator provides further commands. The screenshot on this slide is from a redline sample, and its embedded config only consists of the C2 IP address, identifier value, and an XOR key string. Communication with the C2 servers or exfiltration of data often occurs via HTTP, but some samples use custom protocols or other structured data formats. The screenshot on this slide shows Redline C2 communication, which uses the Windows communication framework and SOAP requests. The yellow box data is a check-in or registration request. The green box data is the C2 server sending configuration data. And the red box data is at the bottom is the final command that instructs the stealer to download and execute another malware payload, in this case, Quasar Red. Discord and Telegram are becoming very popular for C2 and exfiltration as well. And we've seen the use of these steadily increase. It's probably easiest to understand how a stealer works by looking at its administration panel, and we'll continue using Redline as our example. Here we see there is one system present in the panel, and we can pull up several different viewers for different types of data. There are various ways to filter or search for data in the panel if multiple hosts are present. On the left side of the panel, you can see some of the high-level functionality, such as an interface to build new stealer binaries, search log data, configure block lists, etc. If we select the system info viewer from the viewers dropdown, it displays a screenshot of the host and information about the system, such as the general location, type of system, network information, available hardware, and whether any antivirus software is present. The settings tab is where the operator selects specific configuration options that will be sent to the bots running on compromised systems. And for the most part, it's a very simplistic interface. It does not require much skill to operate. 
The operator can configure file settings via regular expressions in the top right dialog box. So someone interested in corporate information might add additional locations to search for Microsoft Office file types. At the bottom right of the panel is a domain detector box, which helps summarize any collected information, for example, cookie data, and will bubble up matches to a summary view. As you are probably aware, many stealers are available for rent as software as a service on the underground. And this slide shows a screenshot of an advertisement on an underground forum from February 2020 for Redline Stealer, as well as the change log for the malware on the bottom right, with the most recent update on May 9th, 2022. The change log shows that the malware continues to be actively developed and the developers treat it as a traditional software product in at least some respects. Redline is available for about $150 a month, and this is around average for major stealer families, but some go for a bit more like Raccoon V2 for $275 or a bit less like Raccoon V1 for less than $100. Redline, like other families, also offers a higher level of service, effectively a pro version or a lifetime license for $900. There are a few different primary marketplaces for stealer data called logs, and Russian market is the example shown on this slide. We're filtering log results to Windows 10 Enterprise Edition, meaning results are more likely to be corporate machines, and the bottom one shows log data for a US-based system and data from Microsoft Online. Each of the log packages are available for about 10 bucks, which is a pretty typical price for raw log data. Genesis Market makes it trivial to quickly use any purchase logs by distributing an extension and browser that interfaces with the Genesis Market logs. On the left side of the slide is a log advertisement, and once purchased, the buyer can directly load the log data in the Genesium browser to immediately impersonate the victim via stolen cookies and other browser data. Initial access brokers, or IEBs, often purchase logs and resell the access after initially vetting that the logs are valid and the type of organization they provide access to. On the left is an ad from the IEB subcommandante VPN reselling a bundle of 34 stealer logs for an initial price of $4,000. And the IEB claims the logs provide a wide variety of access. On the right is an ad from the IEB Exit Q selling access to a company supposedly involved in the COVID-19 vaccine that the IEB obtained from logs and validated. So to sum up, the takeaways here are that using and operating stealers is very easy for adversaries. And even though the focus might seem to be on cryptocurrency and gaming platforms, it's a bit of an oversimplification. Many companies use browser-based single sign-on and users often save company credentials or other form data in browsers. Even if the operator of a Redline or Raccoon breach is not interested in corporate data, there's nothing to prevent reselling the logs on a marketplace where someone else who is interested in corporate data can easily buy and use it or resell the access further. Finally, stealers aren't limited to just stealing information as it's trivial to add functionality to download and execute additional malware or commands, effectively taking a step towards becoming a rat. Thank you very much. John, I said short, snappy, and full of information, and that's exactly what you delivered. Thank you so much. This information stealer stuff is absolutely vital, so I really appreciate it. Thank you.